Good morning and welcome to the midweek devotion here at Trinity Sarasota. Um, this is try number two to go live this morning. We've been having some internet problems and so I'm uh, using my phone instead of my laptop and uh, you know, MacGyvering it. Uh, my, you know, did you pick a word for this year? Uh, my, my word for this year was rhythm. Uh, you know, thinking, you know, these kind of steady spiritual practices and way of living. Um, you know, I was hoping to kind of do that this year. Um, I think instead my word for the year should be adapt <laughs> because, <laughs> Nothing's been steady. Um, the spiritual practices help. I, I, you know, but all this tech, not steady, not steady. So uh, it does seem like a couple of you have found us this morning. So hello, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Uh, this morning, we are going to be singing uh, one of my favorite Christmas carols as our song to start our time together, which is O Little Town of Bethlehem. So uh, please, please sing along as best you can. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is give. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where seek meek souls still, receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Bethlehem, Descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. <laughs> uh, Daisy was singing along this morning. <laughs> yes, Daisy does a lovely alto part. I agree with you, Christine. <laughs> Just lovely. Um, so nice to have a dog that harmonizes. <laughs> We had no idea Daisy would be able to do that when we adopted her from the Humane Society. <laughs> Bonus! Uh, anyway, so uh, happy Advent, happy December. We're so glad that you are here with us this morning. Uh, welcome Stephen and Christine and uh, anyone else who's here. Um, please make sure that you say hello in the chat, whether you are watching this live or you are watching this on uh, the replay. Uh, thanks also. Um, if, if you think that sharing our silliness would be helpful to someone, um, please, please share away. Um, it uh, helps folks to find us. It uh, helps us um, to uh, spread the goodness, spread the joy, spread, uh, spread some uh, uh, Christmas <coughs> cheer. So, looks like Daisy's going to be very vocal today. Just adapt, adapt, adapt. <laughs> uh, last week, uh, we talked about 
uh, John the Baptist's father and mother. We talked about especially his father, Zechariah, and how um, Zechariah had this encounter with Gabriel, um, uh, revealing that this miraculous child would be born and that this child would be the one to announce the coming of the Messiah and, hey, the Messiah is coming, all of this good news. And Zechariah was um, struggling to receive this news. And so uh, Zechariah received um, nine months of silence, nine, nine full months uh, at least of silence, and um, gave time for Zechariah to process the information and um, reflect. And, and I love this idea that, that silence uh, wasn't a punishment for Zechariah, but was the spiritual practice that he needed in order to um, grow, in order to understand uh, and... Um, so that's why we, you know, one of the reasons why we spend some time in silence on Wednesdays is um, it helps us settle. It, it helps us um, be rather than just do. Uh, it helps us to uh, connect with God's presence, uh, the God who is already with us. And so um, let's do a couple of breath prayers to help us settle. Let's take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Deep breath in. A deep breath out. And so on the breath in, I encourage you to use Holy Spirit and on the breath out, complete your saving work in me. So Holy Spirit, complete your saving work in me. Holy Spirit, complete your saving work in me. Holy Spirit, complete your saving work in me. Let's do one more. Holy Spirit, complete your saving work in me. Just keep breathing. Now let's try your promises are true. I trust you. So on the breath in, your promises are true. On the breath out, I trust you. Your promises are true. I trust you. Your promises are true. I trust you. One more. Your promises are true. I trust you. Let's spend a few moments of uh, just silence, just resting in God's presence. No agenda. If a thought comes in, just let it float on by.
For our scripture today, we are using one of the scriptures from the, uh, the Advent devotional. Um, there's still time to get one if you didn't get one. Uh, there's no worries if you're behind in your reading. Um, it's, it's a tool. It's a tool f- to help you connect with God uh, as uh, we are watching and waiting for uh, the coming of Jesus this Advent. And so today we're going to use one of the scriptures from this week's worth of readings, which is uh, more of Zechariah and Elizabeth's story. Um, This uh, is, uh, again, just a beautiful passage. And I didn't realize actually till later that the whole Christmas story includes the birth of two babies that had not, that had not connected with me. Um, But it does. Um, The birth of John the Baptist and the birth of Jesus the Messiah. And so this is uh, John's birth which, of course, would have happened earlier than Jesus' birth, um, at least six months earlier. And it comes from Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 57. Now the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. Isn't, isn't that lovely that uh, the, whole, the whole community uh, rejoiced uh, with the birth of this baby? And, and isn't, that, isn't that natural? Isn't that what we do? We rejoice at um, the, the birth of a child, you know, or a grandchild, or a niece, or a nephew, or a cousin, or, right, you know, a neighbor's child. Uh, Verse 59, on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, right? Makes sense. Uh, These folks are Jewish. And they were going to name him Zechariah after his father. Also makes sense. But his mother Elizabeth said, no, he is to be called John. They said to her, none of your relatives has this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet, you know, because he can't talk. You know, he's, he's mute <laughs> for right now. Uh, he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John. And all of them were amazed. Immediately, his mouth was opened and his tongue freed And Zechariah began to speak, praising God. The first thing out of his mouth is to praise God. I, you know, I kind of want to, I want to meet Zechariah when I get to heaven. I want to, I want to hear about those nine months of silence. Um, And I love the fact that the first thing out of his mouth was not, you know, why did God punish me? No, it is praising God, right? Verse 65, fear came over all the neighbors (laughs) and all these things were talked about through the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered them and said, what then will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with them. Then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy, right? Elizabeth has been filled with the Holy Spirit. Zechariah is filled with the Holy Spirit. Mary, you know, has, uh, you know, Holy Spirit's been involved with Mary. Uh, Little John the Baptist is said to have been filled with the Holy Spirit even, you know, before his birth. I mean, it's Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, right? Uh, and I love, I love, this is the part that we're going to talk about today. So I would love to know what's capturing your attention about Zachariah's prophecy. I, I imagine him preaching and kind of singing it a little. And um, it's just bold and beautiful. And uh, so what captures your attention? Where is it making a connection for you? 
And what is the invitation to action for you from Zechariah's prophecy? Here we go. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty savior for us in the house of his servant, David. He has spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets of old that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus, he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. What a passage, right? So what grabs your attention? Where is it making a connection for you? And what is the invitation to action for you from this passage. Good morning, Brenda. So glad that you are here. Usually I gravitate to verses 78 and 79. You know, by the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Uh, That's uh, usually uh, what I I gravitate towards, this light breaking through. But today, today something different has grabbed my attention. Don't you love that about Scripture? You can read the same passage over and over and over again, and something different will grab your attention. Sir, uh, Stephen says, serve the beloved without fear. Um, yes, yes, Stephen, that is the exact part that is grabbing me today as well. The exact thing. Uh, and so if you go back to verse 74 at the beginning of the verse, we being rescued from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. Wow. And so I have to, I have to ask myself, what, who, what enemy am I being rescued from by our Savior Jesus Christ? What enemy am I being rescued from that I might serve, right? And so I am in need of rescue. There is an enemy. And so am I, am I being rescued from the evil one? Yeah. Am I being rescued from slavery to sin and death? Yeah. Am I being rescued from maybe a person or a system that is an enemy, you know, oppressing, you know, evil, injustice, oppression, you know, that kind of thing. Am I being rescued from me? Am I my own worst enemy? There are times where that's true for me. 
right? So, so this idea that, um, that there are many enemies that we are being rescued from, we are held captive, um, we are living, living under evil, injustice, and oppression. Um, and I am being rescued. And there's a reason I am being rescued. I am, I'm being rescued because I am beloved of God. I am dear to God. But that's not, that's not the whole story. I am being rescued so that I may serve. I'm being rescued for a purpose. I am being rescued f- because there is, there is meaning, there is a mission. I am being rescued, right? And so that I may serve without fear. I may serve without fear of the enemy. I may serve uh, without fear of... Um, doing it wrong. Hmm. Yeah. That I may serve not out of any other motivation except gratitude and love and grace. That I may serve. And it, and it says what the serving looks like. Um, In holiness and righteousness. Holiness means set apart. I realize that because of my rescue, my life is now set apart for service. You know, set apart for the common good. Set apart for the building of the kingdom. Set apart for building up one another in love. You know, righteousness, right relationship. Right with God, right with others, right with us, with ourselves, right with the earth, you know, right relationship. The only, the only motivation is uh, love and grace and goodness. And my serving lasts all my days. We never retire from serving. There is always something that we can do always some, some way we can love and help and encourage and break down dividing walls and change unjust systems. There's always something. Um, we can do something from our sick bed, our wheelchair, our walker. We can do something from our isolation, our poverty. We can do something. We can serve. What a word of encouragement. So what invitation to action are you hearing from uh, this um, beautiful, beautiful passage? Wow. Wow. Uh, let's, Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for uh, coming coming to love and to serve. We thank you for your mighty work of service in your incarnation, in your death, in your resurrection. And uh, we thank you for rescuing us, rescuing us from the many, many enemies uh, that would hold us captive, rescuing us to love and to serve as you do. Um, and so, um, fill us this day, fill us with your spirit, fill us with your grace and your hope and your love, uh, encourage us, help us to risk, help us to step out in faith, help us to be generous and kind, uh, help us to be bold and gracious, uh, help us to help you in your saving of the world. We lift up today those who are suffering, those who are in need of serving. We pray for caregivers and frontline workers for persevering and enduring in strength and protection. 
We pray for um, uh, the vaccine and it is, as it is rolling out. We pray that entire process is covered with integrity. We pray um, for um, the folks who need it to get it. Um, we pray for um, grace and an end to this pandemic. We, we pray. We pray for those who are um, ill. We pray for those who are uh, in need of encouragement and hope this day. We pray for those who are in need of work. We pray for teachers. We pray for families that are homeschooling. Uh, we pray for business owners. We pray for the lost and the lonely. We pray for uh, the technology to hold. <laughs> and we thank you for holding us. Help us. Help us to adapt and persevere and serve. Help us to endure with grace and goodness, holiness and righteousness all our days. We ask this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We close our time together with uh, the song, Bind Us Together. Uh, always seems to be the perfect song uh, for whatever we are talking about. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, bind us together in love. There is only one God. There is only one King, there is only one body, that is why we sing. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, bind us together in love. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, not just any old peace, but the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. I'm going to stick around for just a few moments in case any of you have any prayer requests or praise reports or any further comments that you want to share. Uh, I'm always so glad uh, to have you join us for our midweek devotion. Um, I love uh, your input. I love uh, your insights uh, and the way that this is uh, probably our most highly um, participatory time uh, that we have uh, in our online offerings. And uh, so uh, Brenda is connecting with the idea that we never retire from serving. Yep, me too, me too. And uh, so I just want to remind you uh, that we'll be live on Sunday morning at 9 and 10.30 a.m. Uh, also later, later today, um, we'll be live on Living Compassion SRQ for our Time Together talk, uh, which also happens on Wednesdays. So we encourage you to uh, like uh, that page as well. Um, Christine says she likes my pin. Uh, yes, it's a, it's a little... Uh, Kresh nativity pen this morning. Um, I'm also, I also wanted you to see this this morning. Isn't this beautiful? 
uh, this beautiful uh, Christmas cross stitch um, that was a Christmas gift this year. Um, I just love it, and uh, it's um, here in, in my uh, office area so that I can enjoy it all day long. So, uh, so yes, uh, God bless you, dear ones, and uh, I'll see you soon.